Hey everyone, Dave Greco here and welcome back to the channel. So today I have a pretty special episode for everybody. Today I want to show my process for creating this recent piece that I did for Brox. If you haven't seen Brox before, he's an amazing carver out of New Zealand, fantastic Twitch streamer. I'll put a link down to his channel below. And he is one of the nicest and friendliest people you could ever meet. It was a pleasure to do this piece for him. So in today's video, I want to show that process of kind of pretty close to the start. I think there might've been like five minutes or so of some quick sketching that wasn't recorded, but it's pretty much right at the beginning and kind of show the process. I got some screenshots from him that I'll show off and how we took that piece and try to showcase him with his orc and kind of how we might want to present that. So here's the final piece right here. I'll show you this before we get started, just so you can kind of see where we end up. And a lot of this was trying to bring in the idea of his personality and his love for the horde all into one piece. And so guys, thank you so much. If you like this type of video, uh, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. It helps me a ton. So let's dive into it. Good morning. I hope everybody had a good weekend. We are recording this on Monday morning. So I have a fresh cup of coffee and I'm ready to dive into this piece that we finished last week. This piece actually didn't take too long. It was, I mean, it was probably about 10, 11 hours total, but it just took a few days while we worked on stream. And like I said before, it was amazing to create this piece for him. He seemed super pleased with it. And if anybody deserves it, it is him. Uh, so you can kind of see that I, I probably had like 10, 15 minutes of sketching done. I had like a kind of a loose idea and I was doing more of kind of like a portrait piece when we first started. So you see that even the composition of the piece is totally different, uh, different once we zoom out. But I knew to start off, I had to get some type of pose and some type of, I don't know, facial structure for his character. You know, he sent me some screenshots uh, of his orc, his orc warrior. And I just wanted to capture it. It was tough for me to figure out. I don't, I haven't painted a ton of orcs in the past. And so, you know, so many orcs have such like a furrowed eyebrow and they're always kind of growling or roaring or sn <laughs> snarling or something. And I wanted him to have the seriousness of most orcs, especially like a, you know, a proud Loktar, you know, horde orc, but not seem like he's angry, right? You might get some Marlow sounds through the process of this because that's, that's what he does. So I have like that loose sketch and I'm just, I want to get some of the line drawing. I just want to figure out some of these armor pieces and you can see we change a lot of the sides of everything. Like the shoulder pads are too small, all that type of stuff, right? So it's something we kind of continually work on. Yeah, just figuring out, it's really going through. Oh, we did a quick little mustache on him. But yeah, so I think we actually, kind of jump around some phases kind of quicker than others. Like I didn't spend the time to go around and do a lot of the line work that we might usually do. I really wanted to figure out this face and the lighting. I feel like so much of this piece is going to be dependent on this kind of mood and vibe that we get from the face. And I wanted to go a little kind of messier with my brushwork. I wanted a little more kind of textural detail. Uh, I was. Actually, for a lot of the sketchwork right here, we end up not using the DG main brush. Obviously, we probably use that brush for like 90% of the painting, but I was just trying, I was just messing around with some of the other brushes in my brush pack just to get some sketchier lines, get a little more kind of movement going throughout. So that's kind of what we're going for on this one. Yeah, so we haven't even figured out a lot of this piece and we're diving into some of this kind of early detail. You know, the face is just so important to to me, and it's such a focus of so many pieces. It's what you generally look at first. So I thought it was really important to kind of get it figured out. You know, a lot of, a lot of this was me breaking the rust off of even painting an orc. It's actually been uh, quite some time since I've even done it. So they have very specific shapes, especially if you want that kind of blizzard looking Warcraft orc. They have a very speci specific kind of head structure and mouth structure. Uh, that might be a little bit different. And obviously, I think even even Blizzard's orcs has transformed so much in the past 15 years, kind of like how their orcs are designed and presented now compared to, say, like how orcs looked in like Warcraft 3 or something. There's definitely been a journey for them. 
but I think that's pretty cool. And I think it gives them a uniqueness and a personality. You know, they're just not like a mindless horde, right? And I always thought that was great. Yeah, see, at first it was going to be a little bit of a simpler piece. And then, you know, something that just happens as I start painting, I was like, what, could this be something more? You know, I wanted a piece that felt pretty special for him and special for me. And I was like, I really want to show Orgrimmar the idea of the Horde, even if we don't go into a ton of detail in the background, that uh, he's just, he's a part of this place. You know, maybe Lightbrox, he, he has his own shop where he does his carving and maybe he builds like armor and stuff too. And I want to kind of showcase that. Almost like you kind of came upon him in his shop, right? He still has that serious look about him. But he's still kind of mid-work, he's serious, but, you know, he's also proud and will do what uh, needs to be done. So that is a bit of his... So this part was kind of nice, it was just, what's cool about doing an, or an orc is just that messiness on the skin. You know, there's little cracks and scars and little parts, parts of like different kind of specular lighting that's popping out and all over it. Uh, sorry if there's other shots of... A lot of this was recorded from stream, so sometimes uh, we show off other work, and so sometimes I might, I might miss some of the editing. Yeah, so I want to get a little bit of light happening from his far side, just to kind of bring that form out a little bit. But this is kind of part of the piece where I was like, all right, maybe maybe something's starting to come to fruition here. You know, the rendering on the face was starting to feel pretty fun. It still felt like my work, but it kind of had like a more kind of a realistic polish on top of it. And so I didn't mind spending so much time here getting it flushed out. But this is a good part. Usually I might start kind of okay, going around, kind of figuring out different parts of it as well. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people still ask me, you know, do you spend, how much time do you spend in the black and white? You know, I, it's different for everybody. As you can see for me, so much of my work, I kind of figure it out as I go. You know, I should spend more time in the thumbnail phase and really knock all these little you know, questions out and find these answers. But sometimes I just like to dive in and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's a process that I'm working on and trying to evolve. And at least with the black and white here, there's so many things that I'm trying to figure out, like position of his shoulders, are the, his arms even in the right place? Is the balance of the piece looking okay? You know, I actually wanted to put a little bit of armor on the inside of the shoulder pad pauldrons. Because, you know, like a lot in the Warcraft models, they kind of have, they're kind of like this uh, chasm. They're just kind of empty in there. So I want to put like a solid piece. So it looks like it's sitting on his shoulder. Okay. It was actually great. Is, so for a lot of the process, for a lot of the uh, WoW portraits that I get, is people send me their transmogs and a great thing to do is I just look up some of those armor pieces in Wowhead in the 3D model viewer and then you can shift those armor pieces around to get like a really good perspective on it just because some of them are pretty complicated and they're kind of hard to tell from a screenshot that someone sends you. So that Wowhead model viewer comes in, uh, it's a huge lifesaver. I'm gonna take a little sip of coffee here. Well, even like a lot of this is still like a lot of exploration for me. Where are these kind of straps and bolts you know what's actually kind of holding those kind of braids from his hair you know it's worth spending a little bit of this time doing doing these little tweaks i think it's not time wasted to figure out all the stuff once we start applying the color on top of it a lot of those designs and decisions have been determined for us and it's going to help a ton Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying this new type of content. Uh, I know we've done some of these in the past, but we'll be doing more and more as well as other videos coming out. Uh, a lot of these time lapses, just with a little commentary over it. You know, obviously if you guys don't want to listen to the commentary, you just mute it, put some music on if you want and watch it like a normal time lapse. But yeah, you know, these are a little bit of times for us just to kind of hang out, talk about painting a little bit. And then it's just, you know, a little bit nicer than just kind of tossing it up and forgetting about it, right? We can kind of explore it and 
It's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has done this, even if they don't have a channel or some place to put it. It's interesting to record your own work and then go back and look at the process a second time. I kind of see different things that like, oh, maybe I spent a little bit more, too much time here. Maybe we could do this better next time. It's a great way to uh, look at it. So I think a lot is I'm still trying to find a lot of the forms. I need a, at least as much as I can to read properly. There's a lot of kind of detail kind of overlapping on each other. So I want to make sure it all uh, reads okay. And I still like some of that line work bleeding through. And we've talked about this in other videos is that I think it's still just kind of that love for uh, comic books that I kind of always have. And if there's like a little bit of that line work peeking through, I think is, uh, is really nice. So I want to start at least blocking in some of the background values to figure out how he's going to be placed. I hadn't figured out most of the lighting for the piece yet. It's always something in my head that like, I know I'm going to have to figure out at some point, but uh, we'll get to it. And a lot of these are kind of like placeholder hands. So I kind of make these hands up as a general idea of how I want the hands to kind of look and feel. But then generally I'll shoot reference of my own hands uh, just on my phone and then we can get some proper rendering down of them. But like I said, it's always good to block in the shapes in, that you want first, then shoot reference and not try to find a piece of reference you've already found and try to make it match your piece. That's just, uh, it's so much tougher and I think you're gonna lose a lot of life uh, from your piece doing it that way. Yeah, so we actually spent a, quite a bit. I feel like we almost spent half the amount of time on the black and white as we uh, as we did on the color. You know, for any, in the future, I hope to be able to move to color a whole lot faster. You know, I think we all have goals on what we want to do with our art and how we want to get there. And I love seeing other artists that can just start in color right away. For me, right now in my own current process, it's it's a bit harder for me but it's something I definitely hope to work on going forward. I think we, we all have good short-term and long-term goals for how we want to bring our art. So that's a, that's a really good thing. And even doing these kind of like slight airbrushes of kind of like that highlight on that area even if it kind of gets rid of some of the kind of detail and the contrast, sometimes it's kind of nice ideas just to tell me where some kind of light source is hitting and we're dealing with so much kind of kind of like metal pieces on his armor, but they're not like super shiny chrome metal, right? It's just kind of like rusted, you know, beat up dirty metal. So it was interesting when we went to the color to figure out kind of like what colors to put in, like between warm and cool tones, what kind of bounce light is happening. We managed to get in quite a bit of this like yellow bounce light into a lot of the armor. That was actually some of my favorite parts of the piece. And we'll talk about that a bit when we, uh, when we get to it. And a lot of the stuff with the arm and his back shoulders, I really wanted to make sure that the uh, silhouette and the shape design around it really read properly uh, against the background. You know, sometimes it's nice just to paint in some little details of like little scratches or kind of kind of nicks in the paint. Uh, that stuff always uh, works out pretty good. I think if you just find areas of a piece that just feel like there's not enough visual interest in it, it's a good idea to uh, just throw little things in. But yeah, a lot of this piece was even working for me in the black and white. There was something that was kind of nice about this black and white version. There was like a, like a almost like a thickness to his armor that was feeling pretty good. 
And I've talked about this with people too, especially anyone looking to kind of get into what is kind of this blizzard, uh, wowish type of style, especially for the armor. It's kind of like this idea of thickness of detail, right? Like there should be a consistent weight to it, a consistent thickness. And you don't want to get too fine in some areas, or the pieces of metal, they seem too thin. There's, there's a bulkiness to it, right? There's a weight. And I think you have to carry that through in so much of the designs. We actually almost changed up the piece at one point on to the left. We were going to have a, a couple characters kind of peeking into the tent where he was working. I mean, that was a lot to figure out. But I think at the same time, it was taken away from this whole idea of Orgrimmar and the Horde that I wanted to show in the background. If, it, if it, we just had more characters kind of blocking it. And so we put a lot of light in the background. We're starting to bring that contrast out on him, which felt pretty good. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it really is just a lot of moving around the piece. Clean up this little area, move over here, clean up this area. Is this part working? What feels unfinished? What do we have to tackle next? It's a lot of checklist stuff. And you kind of see, I think we might have had like a small gap. Sometimes I work for like 20 minutes without the recording on if I'm just sitting down real quick. Uh, so you can see those hands were actually uh, been painted again. Those are based off some references that I shot of my own hands. You know, I want this idea of the uh, horde emblem on the shield that he's working on as well. Now I didn't have to go super detailed on it. I thought just a little bit of the of the shape should be enough to sell the point of that. Yeah, there is actually a lot of composition things to figure out in this piece. Because really at one piece, it almost felt like in the composition that we had cut it in half. Like, he existed on the right half and the city was on the left. And how do we kind of bring a better balance to it? And I was sorry that a lot of this work is kind of skewed over to the left. Uh, I just have my Cintiq to the right of me. So usually when the painting is over to the left of the screen, it's generally more in front of me. So I do notice that on some of these recordings. That's why we're not full screen uh, so much with the painting. Because then it would be kind of pretty far to the right. and. Uh, with the uh, 27 inch, it's, uh, it could be quite a bit. So we actually almost pushed back his body from his hand, almost like you're kind of fogging it out a little bit, uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of breath between where his arm and his body is, just so it reads. So there was a ton to figure out on his arm, like it's all kind of mashed up and looking right now and not as solid and clean as the right one. That feels kind of more sturdy. So that's something we'll, we'll tweak up later for sure. Oh, there's some crazy birds out here. But yeah, I actually, I do tend to stay pre-zoomed out for a lot of it. I feel like I can get a lot of this detailing, especially because we're just jumping around so much. I want to see as much of the piece as I can. So right now, like as I'm working on, I'm like, oh, the contrast from the background to his body, still pretty good. But you guys can kind of see this like halfway problem. You know, it's almost like the the composition is split down the middle. Ah, uh, yeah. See, so we were starting to paint some uh, torns up right here, but it kind of looked like a torn, which is kind of being a creeper back there. So we went back to the Orgrimmar design. I was like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I was like, what was it? What is this guy's motives? They're shady at best. That was kind of looking like some type of antelope. And I think this one was even stranger looking. Sometimes you just have to know when uh, when I some idea may not work, and do the hardest pivot you've ever done. So we got rid of them and start diving into an actual structure of the city. Back to, back to plan A.
You know, it's good to do uh, flips like that too, because some of the buildings were so skewed. You know, I wanted to get some nice Zeppelins back there. You know, I could, having those Zeppelins is such a major, major look to me of what makes Orgrimmar, right? So that was super, super important. You know, and as far as the background goes, like we could have done a ton. You know, we could have had like busy streets of characters, you know, people in windows. And you know, that's something, if we had more time, we could have definitely gone down that route. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the subtle stuff can, can go a long way. So like already it was, I just was more confident in my decision of we were gonna go with this background. We actually went more with this kind of like bluish evening sky. When I first started the painting, it was gonna to be totally kind of reds and oranges and that type of like summer day that you might see in Durotar or Orgrimmar. Uh, but I thought if we just had more of kind of like an evening shot of it, we could kind of focus some of that lighting down to the street level and that might just help the composition. Right, I think it's good to always think of ideas, you know, even if they go away from how you started, but if it's gonna help the composition and maybe sell kind of a different idea, I think it's pretty cool. I think it is a good way to uh, go that direction. Yeah, we actually spent a long time in the black and white. Uh, we hadn't even started putting color on this at all yet, but I think we're about to dive in. Yeah, so like most of the time, it's a lot of overlay and multiply layers to kind of start. And really, it's this subtlety and variation of color, right? Like, I don't want just straight green on his face. I want a lot of these kind of, I have like a lot of greens, a little bit of blues. And then getting some of that kind of red, kind of like blood undertone underneath the skin. I think just adds a lot, right? And we want to kind of bring up some of that kind of like orange light that might be kind of cresting across his head. And even in the hair, we have like reds and blues in there. There's so many different kind of like little subtle colors we can start to push. And because I work this way, it's a lot of building up the saturation as I go. And it's tough, and this is a big, I find a big problem with working black and white and first into color it is it's a battle you're battling this type of like kind of muddy underpainting while you're putting color on and so it's a lot of cleanup and work for me to push it out of that stage and so it's it's a process thing that I, i'm truly going to have to work on and so i try to stay pretty quick here i'm just trying to get some color and light in like i said so much is it's just very gray and brown, right? So, you know, not always where you want a pain to be. Uh, so these are just more multiply layers trying to figure out, you know, kind of we're gonna throw, throw our shadows in, our light, our light and shadows are going to determine so much about the composition of the piece. It's pretty, pretty major. And so we're cleaning up a lot. Like I wouldn't know if I was gonna have like a torch or a lantern to the right. That might bring some more uh, red and oranges over there. But then it felt a little bit distracting to me to have such a big light source coming off camera from that side. And then it almost like it squashed him in the middle with the uh, light from, from the city. So I think I'm pretty sure that it's something we end up kind of knocking back down again, but it was worth the, uh, it was worth the exploration. And so even with the color now, we're almost working the same way we did before. It's lots and lots of cleanup. Yeah, I think we just wanted more of a uh, cooler color in the background. And then the warm color of his armor and him, we can make him uh, really pop out. There's still like a lot of empty areas we're always dealing with. You know, you're just doing evaluations around the piece as much as possible. You know, about like what this tent is and everything around it. Yeah, it's really just a lot of sketch cleanup. But I really don't mind. You know, we, we especially on Twitch, we just hang out, we're talking while we're doing a lot of this cleanup and uh, it's pretty relaxing. It goes, 
it seems really tedious, I think, in, in watching this, but I find that it goes pretty quick. It's really not too bad. You know, you can kind of zone out after a while. You're just cleaning things up, pushing shapes, and you just spend a couple hours of uh, cleanup and kind of working it all out. You know, the biggest thing is if you're not happy with a little area or something doesn't feel right, and you can't figure out a solution, it is worth taking a break and coming back to it. You never know, like, when you sit down. If you're gonna see a little bit of answers, like, oh man, what if I try pushing this? Or like, you just glance at the painting from the side of your eyes, you walk back to your computer, and you're like, I think I picture something happening right here. What is, what is that gonna do to the painting if I actually do that? And so that's always, uh, it's always worth it, you know? Like, if you're not on a super tight deadline, take your time with it. You know, push it to the side if you have to, work it on another piece. And then come back and uh, see what you can actually make work or not. I think what I wanted to do with this paint too is just tackle a little bit more environment work. I, I don't tackle enough environment stuff these days. And so I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get out of my comfort zone lately as much as possible. I think it's, I think it's important. I want to spend more time with creature work, with environment work. Uh, with male characters, um, all that stuff. A lot of clients lately have been requesting a lot of kind of like these, what you kind of see is like a lot of like, you know, female characters everywhere. Um, I, I love doing both. And so I really want to uh, dive into some other stuff, especially a lot of this uh, either creature stuff or different type of crazy races, you know. And I think Hopefully soon we start diving into some of this background detail. At least the uh, main building on the left is definitely recorded. I think there's a little bit towards the end. There's probably like the last hour of polish uh, was not recorded. And so you'll just end up seeing the final. It was just kind of done late at night. It's just really looking to uh, wrap up the piece at that point. Yeah, so I'm pushing a lot of I wanted these kind of blues and cooler colors and having a little bit darker for this to help round out the composition. So I wanted the value of that. See how the light kind of swoops in from the top and down into the character. I wanted to use the shadow of the building, the building being shadow, I should say, to help bring that composition in to kind of make it so it wasn't splitting the piece so much in half. So I was like, how can I use lighting and color to really make this work and that was uh, that was my solution for this one there there could be better ways there might have been way better ways to show this composition off this is my uh solution for this one so hopefully it worked yeah so basically you know a lot of how i'm trying to tackle environments like these i'm trying to treat structures environment almost like they are a character like how do i treat the shapes and the line work and the light on it the same way I would paint, you know, a character's armor or outfit. And how do I bring that into something back here? And there's a lot of like subtle stuff back here. I feel like I don't need to dive in to some crazy detail. You know, we could have spent like two days on this background fleshing out this insane Orgrimmar. You know, it would have been cool. <laughs> Definitely would have been cool. But I think the piece, uh, piece works without it also. Then I realized, you know, you, you can't have Orgrimmar here. Orgrimmar back here without a whole bunch of uh, war banners hanging down. That's pretty key. You know, it's a big part of like, we're gonna show the city back here. Um, at least one of the emblems should be pretty prevalent. There you go. Yeah, I'm really just pushing it back. I'm trying to figure out some of these details, these other little structures. And like, it really was just, so much of it is just like abstract shapes. I just want to get the idea of some of these towers and these tufts holding it up. And, you know, I've seen so many kind of different representations of detail level of what Orgrimmar can be or could be, especially that what could be a little bit different from what you see in game. You know, uh, what you see in game is a great visual of it. Um, but if you had to recreate that somewhere else, could you could you change the height of the towers? Could you could you do a, a couple of things that are a little bit differently? And you could look at even how they tackled so much of the stuff in the movie. 
you know, take that initial inspiration and what else can you do with it? Yeah, like a lot of this was just, um, I just wanted this kind of like loose abstraction back here. I think for me is I felt like if I went too detailed that I could start to take away from from Brox's character. And I really just thought he was such an important part of it. I want him to be the, uh, the major focus. But yeah, I think I spent like another hour on the background cleaning up and polish and everything. And just to uh, to finish it up, here was the final again. You can see we just popped a little bit more of the background here. Some of the colors, uh, some of that lighting on the Zeppelin at the top and really just drop the curves on the end of the piece. And here we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this piece. I'll put a link. This will be up on our station as well today for the high res piece and the video. And thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next one.